Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the semi-irregular Google not Google Hangout, the Modzu Weekly Hangout. Wow, it's just been one of those days. I've been doing a lot of heavy lifting today, ripping out some carpet and rolling it up and bagging it and all that good fun stuff. So it, it's been a little insane over here, but you're not here to listen about that. What we're going to be talking about today is your video cards. Where the hell did they go? Why do they cost so friggin' much? And all of that good stuff. And we've got a semi-expert panel here. Uh, first, we're going to get our usual bill. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Good to see you. And adding into the chaos, we've got Father Robert Balliser. Hello. Nice to see y'alls. Josh Sniffen of NFC Systems. It's great to be here, guys. Thanks. And Patrick Norton. Hey, everybody. Sitting out in the middle of a warehouse. On the so, corner of a warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So, uh, Bill, let's start with you. Um, what have you been seeing? Um, at MMPC Tech, we make uh, these... Uh, strong machine aluminum GPU support brackets. And it's been one of my, our most popular product for the last two years. And I've been watching the sales over the last three months and they've dropped, uh, I'd say they've dropped maybe about 40% from usual. Um, so I'm kind of wondering, you know, um, everybody that's watching, let us know, like, what is your thoughts on, you know, were you looking at building the new system and this is keeping you from doing it? Um, or are you doing mining and uh, how's that going for you? Uh, luckily, with uh, the Padre with us, he does or he was doing Bitcoin mining before his, uh, he's packing up everything for his big move. Um, but uh, just let us know in the chat and in the comments, um, were you planning on doing a, a system build and this is holding you back and you're kind of wondering, do I keep waiting or do I drop the thousand bucks on a 1060 or a 1070? You know, and then another thing is some people water cool. So that's another maybe $150 to $200 for a water block just for that GPU as well. And the back plate, back plates go from $40 to $50. Yeah, so all this stuff is adding up. Is it holding you back? Pat, You, what's going on at your end of Techzilla and Twit with all this? Oh, man. Uh, so Ryan Trout and I have had this running joke on This Week in Computer Hardware uh, on and off for months where we've been tracking the prices and – I was mocking myself thoroughly uh, a few weeks ago because when I bought, I've had a, a 1070 uh, in machine I'm running right now, and I bought it literally because I did not have a GPU that could drive this 8K monitor I had to test from Dell, and it was $400. And I was like, oh, this is like 50 bucks over <laughs> MSRP, WTF, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Expletives, anger, irritation. And then like two months later, I was like, Okay, they're selling for eight hundred dollars, and then you know, at peak stupid, uh, which I think took place at the end. I I haven't checked the camel, camel, camel in the last you know five or six days, but like at peak stupid, they were selling. If you could find one, and that's the really disturbing part, they were selling for like eleven hundred dollars, and I'm like, okay, um, because you know the the thing everybody anticipated was you know they're not using these for bitcoin mining right because that was one of the well, people are mining the bitcoin and it's like well no they're mining the ethereum or one of the other currencies because at this point even the asics are getting stomped um at bitcoin mining but it was mind-blowing like you know because everybody's like okay so you know bitcoin hits 20 you know k and then it collapses and you know we started expecting like you know at some point people are going to stop buying gpus but there's some really interesting stuff going on. One is that AMD couldn't actually, you know, AMD says we couldn't secure memory. Um, and, you know, of course, memory prices have gone through the roof too, which doesn't help anybody. But um, yeah, AMD was like, we couldn't secure memory. Then a couple of weeks ago, I actually saw some, uh, some 56 and 64s show up for the first time on sale, literally since they launched uh, back, uh, you know, <laughs> a long time ago last year. Um, and, what we found, like I've managed to find a, uh, uh, a GTX 1080 that Shannon picked up from Best Buy of all places, like pre-ordered for pickup. And that seems to be the way to go, like uh, either, you know, constantly scanning Newegg, constantly scanning Best Buy or going to one of the sites that does alerts and just keeping your eyes open and having a credit card in your hand like at all times mm -hmm. because more often than not like the best buy ones were around for a couple of days which was kind of crazy uh i think because nobody could find them um but you know you'll see something show up on newegg and 
10, 15 minutes, their entire allotment, whatever their, you know, whatever their shipment is will be sold out. Um, so they're out there, uh, you know, and it's like, uh, I keep forgetting the MSRP of a 1080, uh, a 1080, um, because it's just so horrifying to, to see what they're selling for. But yeah, so the GTX 1080, um, it's like $599 is the MSRP. The GTX 1070 is $379 is the MSRP. So what's crazy is like, you know, 700, 750 bucks for a 1080 is, is like the bargain of the last six months. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, are you going to commit to buying it or are you going to, you know, game? Yeah, it was $750 um, uh, on Best Buy for that 1080. Um, and that's like one of the best deals I've seen, except for a couple that have showed up for close to MSRP and then sold out instantaneously. You know, by um, the way, Patrick, what you just described, the spotty availability, that actually defines the difference between a gouge and just a, a supply problem because right. every once in a while, a new supply will pop up someplace where it wasn't supposed to be and it will be priced sanely. Uh, it may be a tiny bit above MSRP, but that's what it was supposed to cost you. And we've just seen that the supply is in the wrong place. It's never right. where you, you're trying to buy it from and that's why they can gouge us. It, it's it's funny, I actually have, a, I have a, a childhood friend who runs a, uh, a computer business in Fremont just across, across the bay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was telling me how he was sitting on his allotments because he knew that he could wait for the price to go up and then have a sale and sell them for twice what they should be selling for. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if I hated him for that, but at the same time, yeah, he's true. When you're, when you're at peak stupid, people are willing to pay whatever they, <laughs> they have. Um, yeah, I mean, if everybody's, I don't know how many people are familiar with nowinstock.net. Um you know, camel, 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 give you an idea of how crazy the pricing is. And it's also like, I just did a search on camel, camel, camel.com. And, you know, you're looking at, let's see, third party new $770 for a GTX 1080. Let's see. And the other thing we found is, is very occasionally, <clears throat> oh, hey, Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1080, Windforce OC, blah, 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 blah. $777.77 plus free shipping, 15 left in stock. So that's that's pretty cheap. Um, you know, the, the question is when you're looking at third parties, because somebody sent a, a link to um, Ryan Trout and I, they're like, oh, this company, you know, the company was supposed to be someplace. The address they were using was in Sparks. The phone number was for a third state. And I was like, I wouldn't send them $550. No. I don't <laughs> no. think you're going to. You know, I don't think you're going to get a GPU. <laughs> you know, they may, you know, they may call you back and be like, "Can you, can you, can you Western Union your payment to us, and yeah. we can fulfill it faster." Um, we're right. we're just going to send some guy by your house if you could just give him a bag of cash. <laughs> we'll yeah. get you your GPU ASAP. Well, I've actually had that works. I've actually had to do that, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, you know, and there actually was a legitimate uh, flash. Uh, supply yes. problem a and we all know that and that's and just it's not going away it's not going away but it's it is easing up i talked to uh, yeah. my guys over at kingston and they said most of the major manufacturers have successfully switched over to 3d nand so they'll be ramping up right. um, so it's going to get better rather than worse but that doesn't i mean it takes a while for those parts to hit the channel yeah well the other thing is samsung samsung got so i think irritated with availability on ram or because they have to funnel the ram into their phones they couldn't sell the ram to third parties they're bringing online they're one of the largest like one of the two largest manufacturers of ram they're actually bringing on the equivalent of 20 percent of t like 2017's capacity like an additional 20 percent of 2017's capacity they're bringing online later in 2018 so Worst case scenario is unless, you know, all the Chinese phone manufacturers decide to do 12 or 16 gigabytes of RAM in Android phones, um, you know, by the end of 2018, there should be enough of a supply of RAM to start bringing those prices down. But the flip side of that is, is RAM was so cheap for so long, a lot of the memory manufacturers are really cool with the prices being considerably higher, right? I was just going to say that. Uh, they, they, they're still suffering from that because they overbuilt yeah. massively. And so what we got accustomed to as... The baseline price for memory that's not the real price most of that right. was sold at or below cost so yeah. that's not going to happen again 
you know, in the last 12 months, Ram has doubled from the lowest point. I think it's almost tripled two and a half, two and three quarter times. Yeah. And, and Robert's got it on the head. That was an unusually low price. Um, but man, I miss buying 16 gigabytes of high speed Ram for 125 right? bucks. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs> so Josh, what have you been seeing? It's been really rough. You know, I, I sell computer chassis for a living and I also do full system builds for a living. And there's been just tons of cancellations of the minis because people who've been waiting for so long been like, I can't build a computer right now. I have to wait till the GPUs drop. And with the full system builds, it's kind of the same thing. You know, people see the, the, the price tag of what a seven, eight or a 1080 costs. And they're like, no, I have to wait. So business has slowed down about 30 to 40% in that regard. So I've been trying to find other things to keep me busy. But a big problem for me is as well, um, I don't have a huge selection of GPUs I can use. This is the longest one, the Zotac 1080 Mini. And I bought um, seven of them last week. And it just takes so much time hunting on eBay <laughs> to find one that has a receipt. So I know it's a new car oh. that's not been mined on you know because i'm gonna be liable for it if i put in a customer build yeah. and i have found that buying all these on ebay the people that are selling them are like i guess employees that work like office max staples those kind of places that yeah. i didn't know had video cards because i'll get them in and they'll have a fedex from staples on there so well, at least you're getting them new then yeah i'm getting them new but it is you have to you have to hunt for quite a while and yeah. uh one of the big problems is too, there is a lot of scams going on and I've been bit by that. And there's a lot of people that are just dirty about it. Um, I bought a 1060 last week. I agree on a price with the customer because I was able to buy it on eBay, um, bought it, um, paid for the shipping and all that. And then the customer didn't ship it to me and said he canceled it and he put the card back up for like a hundred dollars more because I oh. feel on it. Uh. It was still overpriced. And then he was like, oh, I canceled it by mistake. I'm like, sure you did, man. Come on. Yeah, right. It's hard enough to do that. So I had to eat that one. It just sucks that paying, sucks. excuse my language, uh, paying $460 for a three gigabyte GTX 1060. With yeah, because we've seen it from the other side and what the prices were. Yeah. What do you guys, okay, for a while, um, a few weeks ago, the tech media sites, I'd say four different ones, we're putting out this story that, well, hey, gang, no sweat. Just buy an off-the-shelf PC and pull the GPU out of that because that GPU price is going to be the original retail price. And I thought, this is, this is the stupidest advice ever. Well, I mean, there is... There, there was, there was one particular. So there was, there was a couple of SKUs. I think one Lenovo at Costco, and one I don't know if it was Lenovo or HP or whoever it was um, at Best Buy where essentially the price for the gaming system had been set when they ordered them like six months before. So they showed up because, you know, they were, they were talking about this, uh, I want to say uh, a couple of the guys at PC Per managed to score this, where the news went out, like somebody was in a Costco. And they were like, holy crap, there's like, you know, I, I want to say Lenovo gaming machines with 1060s or 1070s in them for what was actually MSRP-ish prices. So, who you know, the guy like, buys like four of them tells all his friends and they all start heading out um so there were some legitimate stories where they're they were, you know like yeah i don't particularly want to buy their motherboard and their processor but screw it i'll buy their motherboard and their processor and i'll either resell those or i'll use the processor and get a better motherboard but they it was the case where you know you were looking at like i can buy a gpu for thirteen hundred dollars or i could buy a complete system for thirteen hundred dollars and harvest the gpu and you know give the system to my kid or something um, yeah and that worked for a little bit and i was using that strategy but they got smart and i you can't even do that. At least I've been able to locally. <laughs> yeah. and it's, yeah. it's not even it's not even malicious because this is yeah. that's what lead time is. Yeah. You got to remember. So Nvidia, AMD, whatever, right. they make these contracts ahead of time and far in advance, especially for the OEMs to sell an X amount of parts for X amount of money, right. and that's locked in. And so and in the the manufacturers, the big ones like Lenovo and Dell, they're not going to be able to dynamically price based on what the the market demand is they're just not set up to do that they sell at a certain price because they know they can consistently get profit from it so it's it's not a scam it it did work but it only worked as long as that supply remained and that, and by the time it was reported that supply was pretty much gone yeah 
There is a one know. exception that's pretty neat, though. Um, I'm a big fan of the Desk Mini by ASRock. It's mm -hmm. their new micro STX format. It has the MXM cards on it. And they're really cool. I've been designing some custom systems for people with them. But they were so expensive because MXM cards are just <coughs> phenomenally overpriced right. um, compared to the desktop cards. But now they're actually cheaper than the desktop cards. And there's been specials on Newegg where you can get 16 gigabytes of RAM or a 7000 series Intel CPU bundled with it free. So <laughs> that's been really awesome. And that's what I've been telling my customers to do. Just, just go buy those. So just Very something good. to look at. That's a great suggestion. But that's only ITX, though. Right. Oh, it's not even ITX. They're really tight. Um, I can probably grab one and show you real quick. Sure. Yeah, super special formats are always going to be a hard sell just because there are limited manufacturing options. <laughs> yeah, but you're looking at like a, a bare bones GTX 1060, 6 gigabytes DDR5, LGA 1150. Like seven hundred and ninety-five dollars. Well, I mean, you can also, you know, you can go with like you can pick up a GTX five hundred and sixty for a hundred and seventy bucks and just game ten hundred and eighty p with light settings. <laughs> How until... dare you, Patrick? Well, I mean, they've got a deal right now. You can get an an ASUS GeForce GTX ten hundred and eighty uh, Ti for only fourteen hundred dollars on Amazon. So, I mean, right. that's pretty good. You should pick up a couple of those. <laughs> so what do you have there josh this is the micro stx board that asrock developed and um, it's oh smaller goodness. than a mini atx board and as you can see it has the mxm cards and you can put a 1080 in it if you want to digital storms uh spark which was at ces that everyone loved was based off of this platform mm. so cute it is cute and it's ridiculously expensive or was ridiculously expensive but now it's ridiculously a good deal until now <laughs> That was on Newegg, you said, Josh? Yeah, Newegg runs some specials with them, so check it out. Yeah, I guess it comes with a way... computer case and everything. It's like a bare bones system. I just, you know, you know, and how much you want to bet that that system probably was going largely unignored, or largely ignored until now? So it's kind of helping <laughs> clear out some inventory. Yep. Wow, you know, you can pick up a GTX 1060 with six gigabytes for a mere three hundred seventy dollars on Amazon. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm glad. That's only 120. It's only 50 percent over MSRP. <laughs> you know, here, here's the sad thing: we built an ultimate gamer PC for Leo, what two years ago, mm -hmm. and the graphics cards in that thing are worth more now than they were when we put them in. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that, you uh, can probably that's get the, wrong. Yeah, you it can is probably true. Pay <laughs> off the rest of that system just with the graphics card. <laughs> Something's so wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like the, the system I've got right here with the AMD 1800X, it's like $1,200 worth of parts, but it would be $2,000 to build it today. Yep. Yeah, $100 of that is the increase in memory price, and the other 700 800 700 something is, is the cost of a GPU if you can find one. Um, Let me ask you this, though, guys. Do you really think in ways like, because we are in a specialty business, it's specialty DIY enthusiasts. Do you really think that it's going to really hurt the hobby that much? I mean, if we have to wait till like the third quarter for the cards to come back at regular price, mm -hmm. because my experience, a lot of people that build systems, they're already going to put a huge investment into it already. So if they have to put another $500 into it or up to a thousand dollars, sometimes because they're putting it on their credit card, they're just like, all right, I just, I'll bite it now, you know, just cause I want right. it. Well, that's certainly well, uh, the case. I've been selling computer systems still. It's just that it's slowed down a tremendous amount. And I do think it's going to hurt the hobby, though, because people are switching over to consoles. And now they're buying that. They're getting involved with that. Some of my friends have done that yeah, instead. You know what, though? That whole console argument, it's like, look, we have consoles at home. My son plays consoles. I play consoles. I still love PCs. I still love PC gaming, PC building, PC water cooling, PC modding, PC overclocking. <laughs> So it's like I'm the same way, but there is a group of people that want to get into the hobby and they think it's interesting. And then they're like, I'm not going to do that right now. Or there's people right. that are not super into it and they're jumping ship and just saying, no, I'm going to I'm not going to get into that hobby right now. I'm going to do but something else. If they were genuinely interested, they can hold out and wait. They'll come back. 
if it comes back uh, quickly, and I don't think it's going to, because like I said, I, I've had maybe 30% drop in sales and that's just me, right? I'm not speaking for everybody, but those people are waiting. And when they start getting the inventory, the stock back, people are going to be buying it up. So it's going to be a long time, I think, before this kind of evens out. Yeah. You know, the thing about a, a hobbyist field like this, where people are, are doing it because they're enthusiasts, because they want something special, is it's about the experience. Because they know mm -hmm. they can go out and just buy a box, but they want to assemble something. They want to make it unique for them. And you need to make that experience smooth. And one yeah. of the best ways to destroy the experience <laughs> is to throw something in there where the consumer knows they're being screwed. Yeah. They know it. I mean, they, there's there's no way around it. It's not as if, yeah. okay, it's a little overpriced. No, straight up, they're getting gouged. Mm -hmm. And, you know, either they're going to go through with it, as you said, they're just going to dump it on the credit card, and they're always going to remember that they got gouged, and it will leave a horrible taste in their mouth. Or they'll delay, and they'll get to that point where right. I don't want to delay anymore. I'm just going to buy a, a, a ready-made system, and I guess that's it. So, it's yeah. 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 I mean, it's funny when you look at the Steam stats, right? And the, the, the Steam, the hardware survey is, is optional. So, you know, it's hard to tell, like, what percentage of overall Steam users actually opt into it because I don't think they get too much in detail on that. But when you still look at, like, the primary display resolution, you know, it's still 78% of the people reporting is 1920 by 1080. You know, so the upside is that a lot of, you know, and then, and then you look at, like, the, the top games by player count, you know, Current players six hundred forty nine thousand three hundred on uh, battlegrounds. Player unknowns battlegrounds peaked out at two point seven two million seven hundred fifty thousand. Right, Counter Strike Global Offensive. Um, you know three hundred seventy one thousand people playing right now. Six hundred fifty thousand six hundred forty four thousand was the peak. You know Dota two again three hundred forty thousand people playing now. Six hundred sixty four thousand peaked out today. Like. You know, the majority of the games where the majority of the people are playing, you know, can get by on 1080p graphics. It's frustrating, especially if you've got like a giant ass monitor, high resolution monitor. But, you know, I, I think it's hopeful that there's still a lot of people that are like waiting because they're going to upgrade their monitor. Or, you know, we've been saying for a long time, like, you know, the vast majority of GPUs or way overkill if you're gaming at 1080p, and the vast majority of users are still using 1080p monitors. And yeah, I mean, you know, we're at the far end of the bell curve. Like, you know, I'm sitting here like I have a ridiculous number of, of cores in my machine because it makes handbrake run faster and then I get to go home earlier. So, you know, there's a lot of power <laughs> yeah. users out there. I mean, I had a friend of mine who, who runs engineering apps. He can get away without having like a Quadra, you know, but he's sitting there and he's like, I'm going to upgrade this machine and get a second monitor just as soon as it won't cost me up delete exploded mortgage payment to buy a gpu so yeah. i think a lot of it's going to come back i think it's i think where it's frustrating like you know there's there's anecdotal reports from like micro center where they've given the managers the discretionary ability to charge someone msrp if somebody comes in with their nine-year-old son they're thinking like well we want that kid to be buying stuff from us for the next 30 years so cut them a deal on the card um, you know, if somebody comes in, you know, muttering about Bitcoin, don't cut him a deal on the card. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, that, that is remarkably forward looking. That's amazing, actually. Yeah. Uh, it wow. Is. You know, yeah. then there's many cases like where stores are reserving, like instead of making their stock available online, they're reserving GPUs for their local purchasers. You know, so if you happen to be within striking range of a micro center, it may be worth like pounding their website every day to see if they have availability. <sighs> You know, I've tried office. that too. I have a friend in Houston and I tried purchasing stuff from him, uh, but I've not had a lot of luck there, unfortunately. One of the uh, things that I've seen is even though they're limiting it to one person, one purchase per user, and that's usually within a 48 to 72 hour period, uh, EVGA periodically is doing their bundles deals where if you look at the cost of the main board plus the, v the video card, you're paying MSRP just oh, to yeah. get the two devices yeah and so you can sell off the main board and keep your video card and you're gonna end up paying msrp it's just that these deals these bundles they are selling out fast because people are doing exactly that they're buying yeah. the bundle and they're selling everything else off are these the ones that are listed on the evga website yeah, uh, they come and go. Um, they will be out of stock for like a week at a time. And then all of a sudden, they'll be in stock for about four hours. And so you just got to hit your email reminders. Um, a couple of weeks ago, they actually 
did a crash sale on their 1070 based um, laptops, literally half price. $2,700 laptops went for $1,300. Wow. Wow. And it lasted about four days. Oh, wow. So up on their website right now, they've got the EVGA GLC 240 liquid water-cooled CPU cooler and EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 for $689. That's not bad. No, not bad at all. 1070 this, uh... Ti with a water cooler for 700 bucks. Don't do it, Patrick. <laughs> But I'd say snap it up now because I've been looking at prices all week buying stuff, and just uh, Friday they dropped. Like you were just looking at that uh, EVGA card, Patrick, for three hundred sixty uh -huh. bucks on Amazon. I paid four hundred and ten dollars for a three gigabyte version uh, at the beginning of last week. So <laughs> I didn't. Amazon had no stock. So I'm, I'm so definitely sorry. making some purchases right now. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of market volatility. <laughs> And uh, for me, too, I keep a track on that, too, because I'm part of their folding at home team and they give the team 10 EVGA dollars a month if you reach certain goals within the program for them. And it's, you know, it's not going to pay for even for the electricity that we use for the program. But it is a nice thing that those yeah. of us who are going to be running folding at home anyway, it right. builds up. And so over the period of a couple of years, I've got two hundred and forty dollars that I can throw at a video card, cut it in half. And as long as something is available um, to the point where I've bought uh, four or five of their B stock cards, have had no issues with them. Um, yeah, other people have folded on them, have mined on them, but um, I'm not running them through heavy thermal cycles that are going to cause the cards to crash, you know, back and forth. They're running hot constantly. And, you know, you just kind of pay attention to those little darker corners of the availability thing. Um, if anyone wants to join EVGA's folding team for that little extra kick up that they, you know, you can slowly build up over time, I'll gladly take credit for you joining the team. That's awesome. <laughs> and, <laughs> but be, between that uh, little bit of a discount that rolls over over time, you know, I've got right now um, between that and what I've won through internal folding contests that we've had, I'm sitting on four 1070s right now. And they're being used. I'm not going to sell them. I'm not like, you know, investing in them or, or anything. But, you know, this is something that I was able to build up when the prices were down at regular prices. And now I'm looking at everyone else and I'm kind of going, I could sell them off and get a killing, but I also kind of like my cards. <laughs> I'd keep them. I'd yeah. keep them, man. Well, thanks to you, I kind of have to keep one of them now because I'm not investing in another water cooling card for another video card is anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> we were discussing, um, as we were putting this together, one of the questions that we were going to look at is strategies rolling forward. You know, how do you personally deal with things in this? And uh, Bill kind of helped me, help stick me into the I'm going to stay with what I have corner because... It's uh, $140, like he said, for a, your average water block for a video yeah. card. And I'm going to be water cooling my second card here. And so that means I'm sitting on these 1070s now for at least two years or until they die. I'm not going to look to upgrade anytime soon. These are great cards. They're going to last me for a long time. And on the other hand, I also have a... GTX 970 here that I'm going to be listing as soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you guys had experience with overclocking older GPUs and what would you suggest? Any like, you know, good software out there for that? Um, any scenarios, Crossfire, SLI solutions? In you know? my limited experience, the return on the time I put in to try to overclocking a GPU has never worked particularly well. But I also know I may be a minor subset of people who just suck at overclocking GPUs. <laughs> yeah, some of them don't work well out of the box. The 10 series yeah. just don't overclock very well. But uh, the 280 series from AMD, the last generation, those overclocked like 20% yeah. on air. So that's just with the AMD's software, Josh. Yeah, yeah I use the Sapphire Tricks on AMD and on uh, NVIDIA, I use Afterburner. So, yeah. Okay. I this mean, is an interesting are... question we've got in our live chat. We do have a live chat going on. Um, this is from Mike Lamphere, and he asks, how do you guys think the current prices of GPU and RAM will affect the pricing on quality monitors? 
It shouldn't. Uh, I, I mean, depends on what he means by quality monitor. Is he looking for something that's uh, it's got all the bells and whistles, it's got a curved screen? Uh, because, I mean, they're completely separate markets that they build based on demand from gaming systems. Uh, so I, I don't think it's it shouldn't change it. Hey, Patrick, have, have you seen a big jump in uh, gaming monitor yeah. pricing? It, no, I mean, uh, I don't think it's going to be a big jump. I think, I, I think long term, yeah. monitors are complicated, right? Because the most of the companies that make desktop monitors, okay, except for Dell, right? Dell sells most of the monitors in the United States. But if you look at Samsung and LG and a bunch of the others, um, the vast majority of them buy are are also television manufacturers. And I, my rough understanding is that the margins on the desktop monitors are better than the margins on televisions because nobody makes any money making televisions. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you may think like, you know, it's a $3,000 super TV and LG is just like, man, if we could just make another eight cents off each model, <laughs> another eight cents off each model. And uh, so the, the, the glass availability and the prices, I, there's like whole lines that are making 1080p monitors that I think all of these manufacturers would love to spin up to 4K or something higher resolution. It seems like overall, most people are still buying 1080p monitors. Um, and it's funny because like I got this Dell XPS uh, 3415 in for review and I had to send it back and I bought one. And it was really funny to watch the reactions because, um, you know, one of the programmers I, I work with you know, walked in, saw my monitor, and he's like, hey, hey, and he's German, so it was, it was like, hey, can I touch your computer? Uh, I can't do a German <laughs> accent. But he's like, yeah, and he sits down, and he, like, opens up three windows and puts a text window and pretends it's the thing he writes code in, and he's like, <gasps> and, like, bought one. And, you know, there's, like, five of them, you know, at the, at the place I work out of now. Um, all because so many people are like, I have 1080p or, you know, it's, it seems like the gamers certainly lead the way, like, like gamers and Photoshop geeks and, you know, Wall Street corporations kind of lead the, the way on these high resolution monitors and the volume on that. I, I think it's still, I, I, this is a long, boring way of saying, I think high resolution monitor availability, um, is going to stay. I think if anything, the prices are going to stay where they are, go down, um, you know, because you can still run if you're if you're doing productivity apps, if you're running, you know, like accountants on, you know, 3450 by like 1400 monitors, like happier than a pig in the place is pig or happy. Oh, sorry, <laughs> keep this friendly, but, um, you know, like a 3440 by 1440 monitor for an accountant when they're looking at all of the cells spread out, they're really happy. And then they want another one and they've got all of the cells, you know, they've got so. So a huge component of this market are people who don't do any gaming. You know, I think the biggest problem with gaming monitors is being like, oh, do I get a G-Sync monitor or do I get a, and can I, and and will this be available? I mean, you know, I, I think there's frustrations in, in, in high speed, high resolution gaming monitors, but it's kind of a separate problem from GPU availability. I mean, the lack of GPU availability is going to help. Because if you're sitting there like, I'm going to build a new PC, I want to have my new PC, then I'm going to do my high-res monitor, and it's like, how much is that GPU? And then, you know, like Josh was, was talking about before, like, I'm just going to not build a PC for however long it takes until I can look at this and not, you know, end up divorced because my wife found out how much I spent on the <laughs> GPU. Um, you know, but the mere, I mean, you know, the mere fact that we're finding stuff um, for you know, within fifty percent of MSRP is a strong sign. Yeah. <laughs> you know, availability is is loosening up, but you know, it's also it's like once the channel's been drained and everybody's been hammered, you know, it just takes a <coughs> it takes a while for that to kind of build up. And the other thing is everybody's talking about. Somebody, you know, tweeted me like, oh, NVIDIA is coming out with new cards in April. They're probably just not making any of the old cards because they're going to wait until the new cards or they're building up stock of the new cards. And I'm like, man, I don't know a lot about NVIDIA, but I'm pretty sure they'll build and sell every single card they yeah. can of every <laughs> model they can mm -hmm. until they absolutely positively <laughs> have to shift to the new stuff. Like there, nobody's nobody's like, you know, the the, the manufacturer is another 300 million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, the, the manufacturers aren't like, they're not, the, these prices aren't high because the manufacturers are charging more. The prices are high because it's scarce. 
you know, yeah. there's no, 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 there's, there's some guy at Nvidia twirling his mustache, looking at a warehouse <laughs> filled with millions of GPUs, <laughs> just saying, not yet, not yet. <laughs> no, the day, yeah, they're going to dump those the day before the new G, like seven days before the new GPU comes out, they're going to flood the market and sell all of their existing stock at MSRP so they can piss everybody off when the new GPUs come out. I'm just not, you know, yeah. not feeling it. Not it's not even a good Mission yeah. Impossible like backstory. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Patrick on, on the monitors, it's it's uh, interesting because my priorities have changed since I've uh, become older and feeble. Um, I used to love gaming monitors, but now it's sort of like, well, I can get a 27 inch G synced, beautiful 4K gaming monitor with a curved screen, or for the same price, I can get a 43 inch monster 4K <laughs> display. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get the 43 inch monster yeah, display yeah. because I can actually read it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I reading glasses, man, change yeah, my life. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> my biggest problem is like trying to solder like surface mount components. With oh glasses. gosh, you know what I had to move to doing? I have a uh, an SMD station that uh -huh. has a camera, so I can look at the monitor. Uh, mm, there and, you go. And I hate the fact that I have to do that, but I have yeah. to do it now. You know what what you know ocular macular degeneration means? You didn't die young and stupid. Yeah, that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, as a person who um, has personally experienced this, do not look into a uh, networking fiber optic laser with your remaining good eye. Huh? <laughs> huh. <laughs> I'm gonna make a note. <laughs> just just so you know. I'm gonna put so that we on. We should the mention list. that Padre does mining. Uh, and and initially this this hangout was going to be more about um, getting into mining, but this GPU black cloud is kind of taken over. But um, from the other perspective on your end, um, how is how is that going? I mean, I understand that you're packing up stuff for the big move, but yeah, yeah, no, I mean, if if you want serious mining, the person I know to talk to right now would be Alan Malventano. Uh, he's got a fantastic setup and now. Uh, Patrick was dead on. People who are using GPUs to GPUs to mine Bitcoin, um, not uh, maybe it's sustainable at the crazy price levels, but not so much once it gets down below 10k. Yeah, uh, you're just not going to get enough return to pay off the energy you you use to mine that Bitcoin. Uh, it's still usable for Ethereum. I don't know how much longer it will be. Everyone who's serious into it has gone to to custom Asics just because they're far more price efficient uh they're far more energy efficient and you'll just get they'll be usable for a longer period of time i know wasn't, too, i'm sorry wasn't ethereum though one of the last ones that was quote unquote still asic proof until recently right right i mean it nothing is asic proof once yeah. you figure out how the proof of work works you can design an asic for it um, so, I mean, yeah. yeah. It was two weeks ago I heard that they finally broke the ASIC on that, and you yeah. know, a lot of the graphics card uh, miners were freaking out badly. Right. you got to remember, early on in the hobby, it was just, hey, I'm not using my computer right now, so when right. I'm sleeping, I'm going to have it mine cryptocurrency. That made a lot of sense. It was something I had already bought, something that I it was just going to spin its wheels if I didn't do anything right. with it. So why and not? You can resell it. Precisely. You know, I saw a maker afterwards. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> Yeah, but now you you have people who are building systems just to mine. That's uh, troubling <laughs> to <Yeah>. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're Does doing God's work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, God sits on a huge cache of Bitcoin. I, I don't know. If you knew <laughs> so to step sideways a little bit on that, though, um, some of the different technologies that are using blockchain. Do you see? Are you seeing anything yet? that really would offer the same kind of social return the same way that a folding at home or another one of those distributed um, computing programs like um, the uh, the search for SETI, the search for extraterrestrial technology uh, intelligence or any of those other things. Are you seeing anything that's using blockchain in that kind of same venue? Uh, the one thing that I I'm actually quite excited by is using blockchain to verify voting records. Um, that's actually, mm. a, that's a technology and that's a process I could get behind because it makes sense. Well, that, um, and it leaves you with millions of copies of the record. Precisely. So, precisely. Yeah. You, you can't hide when everyone knows exactly who voted for what, 
although you'd actually have to know which one is you. I mean, so right. so it, it grants anonymity, which we need in our voting system. And at the same time, it grants verifiability. Uh, I, if if any of the, the ledgers has a difference, I know someone was trying to do something nefarious. Uh, and I can I can do that instantly. Now, the thing about blockchain technology, and, and the, this is what people conflate blockchain and Bitcoin. I know it's very easy to do that because Bitcoin is always in the news. And yeah. you think blockchain, you think Bitcoin, you think Bitcoin, you think blockchain. Um, the blockchain technology is only wasteful energy wise when you do something like Bitcoin, where you require all the nodes to do the exact same proof of work to and only reward one. Um, if if you have a system where it's not about earning the reward, but actually keeping an accurate public record, then it becomes much more doable, much more feasible. Uh, and so that's that's what I'm looking for. When I'm listening to a speaker who's talking about using blockchain for something other than a cryptocurrency, I want them to explain up front that that's what needs to happen. You actually have to encourage good citizenship to make a blockchain work properly without financial incentive. Yeah. Um, mm. But if you can, it's actually a very promising tech. Yeah, that's well, that's one of the reasons why folding at home took off the way it did was they they gamified it. And, you know, you yep. you, you get that little thrill when you're one point higher than the next person and you're going to start <laughs> running away from them. And, you know, that really helped the project take off and keep running. And so then the question comes, OK, with. You know, if you want to help set up that voting record database, other than, yeah, that's great citizenship, you know, try to figure out how to gamify it, you know, how to, I don't know, we need that little bit of sugar in order to, you know, give us that reward, I guess. Well, I mean, the sugar is I'm helping to protect democracy. Yeah. Well, we think this, you and I think it like that. I, I don't know of how many other people do. Yeah. And the other thing about, say, like a voting system using the blockchain is it wouldn't be running 24-7. It doesn't have to run 24-7. It has to run during election campaigns and, and during actual election night voting. Uh, and the system would be incredibly, robu ro incredibly robust, incredibly redundant, um, and again, immediately verifiable. I love that. that. That, to me, is taking a technology that right now is not really being used for what it's ideal for. Uh, and, and turning it back into something that's promising. I, you know, that's for me, that's my favorite kind of tech story. Excellent. Um, so just watching the live chat here and uh, everybody's uh, making friends and chatting. Uh, um, did you guys have any other thoughts on this topic that you wanted to share? Just one. Go ahead. The future is Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah, how many million Doge are you on there, brother? <laughs> I, I, I think I have like um, 1.3 million Doge. So, yeah, try, <laughs> drive that, drive that Doge up. <laughs> you know, I actually think it's interesting that the GPU shortage could give um, a chance to Hades Canyon and the new APUs, the Raven Ridge APUs, because yeah. well, for one, they're finally good, right? And two, there's a lot of people on small form factor, which is where I hang out, that are really buying into it. So maybe that can give them a chance. Maybe we can see some more cases, maybe some more com mini computers. I like that. So that's the silver lining. Mm -hmm. And also buy Dogecoin. <laughs> and also buy Dogecoin. <laughs> Patrick, you've got to have some Doge, right? I mean, you messed around with it. No, I, uh, no. I, I, you know, by the time I figured out I should be mining Bitcoin, it was too late. Right. Uh, you know, the more I look around at all the alternatives, it was just uh, also, I mean, I should put it in a serious context. Electricity is incredibly expensive um, where I live. So it would have to be an enormous return to not. Um, I, I, I kind of, I, the, once you get, they don't do sort of like by time of day where I live, you get an allotment and then the price goes up by 50% right. and the price effectively it doubles. Mm. Um, and just having an electric stove and a electric uh, dryer and small children uh, creates enough mm -hmm. problems for me. So the idea of you know running several hundred watts, twenty four seven, three sixty five would just do terrible, terrible things to to my electrical bill. I mean, that's also what's what's interesting is is listening to people, you know, 
when some of the really big mining operations where, where they're moving to like the Pacific Northwest, um, you know, because the, the electricity options are so cheap to the point. And, and I guess as near as I can tell, they seem to be moving into um, like industrial parks and then just hammering racks and racks and racks of machine, which are creating issues with electrical delivery. Um, you know, the, the one person I know who's, who's pretty successfully mining is in a state, uh, in a county, in a state where the electricity is particularly cheap. Um, you know, so he might be clearing two grand a month, but he's also running like 20 systems flat out 24 um, seven right. to the point where his running joke was like, how can I reclaim the heat from these systems? So I don't have to heat my house this winter. Mm -hmm. um, Which actually know. there are people working on that. They have a system in Norway <laughs> where they've distributed the miners and the miners actually generate heat that heats water inside of the the host house uh, <laughs> it's the weirdest thing i've ever seen but it, yeah okay sure radiant heating from you know um yeah i mean it's it's uh I, i'll be curious to see how long it sustains because you know bitcoin is yeah. completely unhinged and the price has dropped ethereum you know i think ethereum is going to fall through the floor if the asics come online yeah you know i i you know I think Sniffin's definitely right with with the APUs. Like it's a great time to be AMD. Um, <laughs> you know, I I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Um, I'm not holding my breath at this point on anything because at this point I can't believe the the prices have stayed as high as they have for as long as they have. Uh, yeah. Boogles but, McGee yeah. in the chat. Boogles McGee. This is a good uh, statement. NVIDIA and AMD should just block the mining processes with the firmware and release cards without that code that miners can buy. What do you think? Would that ever happen, guys? Uh, I mean, heard rumors about, you know, you know, the rumor of, uh, I know a guy who knows a guy who were saying that that might be a possibility, but I, looking at it code-wise, I'm not certain how you would isolate what a a mining transaction looks like versus what a complicated 3D transaction looks like because once you pass it yeah. through into the GPU, they're almost identical as far as the processes go. It's just math. That's all it is. It's math. So yeah. you're going to block math? <laughs> I mean, the other thing is, is as soon as they did that, if they actually had the capability of doing that and they could force all of the GPUs to auto-update to put the code in, the lawsuits would be epic. Right. Uh, I mean, it's it's just bad business. Why would you take something that your product can currently do and make it not do it? Yeah. That uh, you no one can get away with that except you know maybe Apple. So it's <laughs> you know yeah. no AMD Intel no don't do that. And if our market doesn't implode, we're going to be sitting pretty pretty in the next couple months here as availability yeah. comes back. So. Now an amusing story that I heard uh, thanks to listening to this Sunday's twit. Um, there was a mining operation in Brooklyn that was taken down because of all things. It saturated the cell tower that it was right. uh, set up near, not because what? they were using the cellular uh, system itself, but because the ASICs were producing 700 megahertz noise loudly <laughs> enough that it drowned out the cellular tower. Uh, yeah, I think those those were ant miners, right? Yeah, I, I think yeah, and uh, yeah, any so the FCC cert sicker on the side was that was just fake. <laughs> and pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. Sorry, uh, Andre didn't mean to interrupt. Now, I mean, what they could have done is they could have made a little Faraday cage around their their miners, and that would have solved the problem. So, I mean, at, at some point they'll get back to that. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, any equipment that probably hasn't actually gone to the FCC for for. Uh, for a, a verification that it meets specs is going to leak RF. It, that's that's what electrical equipment does, uh, and this just <laughs> this just happened to be close enough to a tower that it was basically competing with the actual tower for legitimate airspace. Now it makes me wonder all of those uh, naked tables that you see, where it's just GPU, 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 motherboard. You know, no shells around it. None of the typical EM shielding. Right. How many of these are going to start leaking at in time? Because I do know that the GPU, especially, will start to release a lot of RF noise as it ages, and you know these systems are not getting any younger at all doing that kind right. of math. 
Right. It could be really scary, too, in case they start cracking down and putting taxes on just hardware to make up for people doing that or system builders. You know, you're already supposed to get each system that you build at home certified, which is ridiculous. No one's going to do that. I found that out when I started. <laughs> but the CD is distributed for observation and entertainment purposes only. <laughs> do not attempt to build a system using this case. Um, man, I, I, you know, it's, I, I, so there's, it, it's been interesting. It's been interesting, uh, to, to like one of the houses on my block, um, had a, a, a problem tenant and the problem tenant was actually the owner's daughter. And part of the reason the, the daughter was a problem tenant was because she was operating a, she was growing weed in the basement, um, in significant volume, significant enough volumes that she actually paid somebody to, uh, route electrical, uh, basically, you know, to some, I'm not entirely sure how they did it. I have to ask an electrician friend of mine who actually repaired it. Um, but they, they ran, uh, electrical line and kind of stuffed it into the top of the meters kind of snap into these weird kind of connectors, uh, your power meter. And they managed to get a couple of 12 volt lines in above the meter, snap that in place, snap that back in place, replace the seal, and then use that to not pay for the staggering amount of electricity they were using running grow lamps 24 seven. And I think it's more likely that, that, you know, places are going to notice like people are going to burn out electricity. They're going to notice really, really high. I, I, I think if you don't create a problem, Nobody's going to catch you. So if you don't have like a ham radio enthusiast on your block, if you're not taken out a cell tower, you know, if, you know, you're, if your electrical company isn't all of a sudden like, well, somebody on this block is using a lot of electricity because, you know, the, you know when, you, when you double the sort of consumption in a particular chunk of the power grid, they may actually start looking for it at some point. I mean, that seems to be where a lot of people get nailed. Um, you know, I was laughing because a friend of mine had to get his, his, uh, you know, his, uh, 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 his mains like upgraded from I think it was like 50 amp and he put in 200 amp and the guy's like oh you're going to be growing in the back and, and he's like no I'm a welder <laughs> and I finally <laughs> saved up enough money to buy the welder I wanted for the last decade and he's like oh okay um, but it's you know I, you know, people do stupid stuff all the time um, it's just whether or not they're in a situation where they'll actually get caught for it um, I can yeah. see it now there's a, a future story a big bust in Oakland because on the top floor you had an illegal marijuana grow. On the middle floor, floor you had a bit, uh, Bitcoin mining operation. <laughs> and on the ground floor you had Patrick Norton with his welder using up all <laughs> of the power. All of it. No, I, 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 I use very small welders that run off of 120 volt or my dryer socket. Uh, but I don't do enough welding to create that kind of mayhem. Yeah, the city uh, put in a pumping station right in front of my shop. I mean, they dug out this 40-foot hole and put that in there, but they left the three-phase power hookup like inches away from my shop. So I'm just thinking about running a line down there. <laughs> <laughs> that would save me, I think, 22 grand is what that was quoted before. So, Wow. Now, I, I, <laughs> I have heard also, because I do work with a local power company, I have heard of a couple of, um, uh, shall we say, automated calls that were kicked out by the automatic meter system that <laughs> saw a um, suspicious increase in electricity, and it turned out to be a mining operation. And it was a rather interesting and embarrassing conversation for the young kid to be having with his parents about, well, the cops are here, Dad, and it's not weed, okay? I promise. It's really not weed. It's you know, far worse. Fireworks. Fireworks. Here in California, we've got the Green Triangle uh, just above us, Humboldt County. And yeah. you can fly over that in a Cessna, very low, with a FLIR camera, and you can tell which houses have grow <laughs> operations because they're bright. They're just bright, bright, they light up at night. I guess we could probably do the same thing over parts of uh, middle of America where energy is cheap and find all the mining operations. The trick is not get shot down by pissed off meth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> meth this is true. This is true. Flying low over their, over their uh, operation. No, I don't know. I mean... Just for fun, anybody want to take a, a wild stab at when you think GPU prices are going to come back down? Just because, you know, nothing says failure like guessing on yeah. when, uh, <laughs> what supplies are going to ease. I will take a stab at the NVIDIA side when 
um, the announcement is made, possibly in April. Uh, once those, once the 2000 class hits, it should follow the same pattern that the 10, the 1000 class did, where the 970s spiked a little bit and then they plummeted almost immediately. And I was able to pick up a second 970 for about half price with my discount, of course, from folding, but it was helped out along because the prices came down just after the announcement. And so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing more 1070s coming down in price too. Well, I hope that you're right because GTX 980s right now are still going for like 500 bucks. So <laughs> I don't look at the 900 classes as a good investment <laughs> anymore anyway. No, I'm not, I'm not making that claim. Wise. <laughs> I'm not making that claim. It's just that it's so, so crazy right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Padre? Um, I, I want to say actually start at 2019. I'm going to be a little pessimistic here just because they there still is a memory constraint just because the new factories are online now and producing doesn't mm -hmm. mean that all the agreements have been signed and all the parts are going to find homes where they need to be uh it's going to take a while to set that up it's going to take a while to ramp up uh so quarter one 2019 you'll you'll actually start to see a drop there'll, there'll probably be a couple of mini drops between now and then but the the market is so amped up right now that every time there's a little drop you're going to see a, a burst of buying which is going to drive prices back up so First quarter 2019 is when it actually levels off for good. Okay. Billy, any uh, any thoughts? I, I agree with the Padre. I have a feeling that's going to be 2019 as well before we see things stabilize again. Um, All right. Well, we have a late addition to the uh, the crowd here. Chris, uh, you got any uh, wood-built GPUs hidden out there that you might be able to flood the market with? Uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> But I was also in agreement with Padre. I was thinking probably not this year, unfortunately. Okay. In fact, I just built a new system, and I had to go with the 760 that I had laying around because that's something I actually had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Moss, Padre was mentioning uh, that the new workshop that he's going to be in has turn-of-the-century equipment similar to the stuff that you collect. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Uh oh! No, you got him started. <laughs> I know. Now I want to see. Oh yeah, actually, we have one that looks very much like that, but it's got foot pedals, so you you alternate your your foot movement, and it turns a belt back and forth, and that's the lathe. Oh, that's this. Uh... <laughs> I got one of those. Hold oh, on. Oh yeah, he, he collects. Yeah, the one oh, that's yeah. behind it is a foot-powered mortiser, so that's for cutting square holes in your that's stuff. Awesome. Yeah, but all my tools have like really <laughs> cool engravings on them from the turn of the century. So, the... that'd be so, fun. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I won't even show you that wall because that one's the the collection wall. Oh, I'm probably please. gonna replace <laughs> it with a CNC and a laser machine. Oh. <laughs> you wound him, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moss, so what is your thoughts? Uh, since you missed us earlier, Moss, your thoughts on the <laughs> GPU drought? How are you dealing with it? You just mentioned that you used an older card for a build, but uh, what are your thoughts on it and and uh, the mining going on? Uh, the mining thing is not for me. But I, oh, I must correct myself that mining <laughs> isn't the the culprit behind all of it. Well, not entirely anyway. Right. I'm sure there's some blame to be had, but yeah, I don't know. I've so far I've just been going through the stock of stuff that I've had. So like these 760s I've had since they were new. I've <laughs> literally never used them. I have two water blocks on them, which is and back plates, which is why I didn't ever sell them. It's like, well, <laughs> I want to be able to use them in a water cooling loop because that's mostly what I do, but the blocks themselves are worth more than the cards are now. So it's like, I might as well keep them because they're the short, the little short guys, mm -hmm. the short reference. And so I've also got a 960 in another system because I, again, I had that one. It was another card that I had R made and I've got a 970 in my main desktop again, because it was one that I actually had. So I haven't bought a GPU in probably three, two years, maybe. So that's kind of how I've been dealing with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're like me in that we just 
we focus our attention on creating and building other things and just kind of wait it out because we've we seem to have more projects than time, more computer cases than time around <laughs> us. And there's always something that can be done instead, you know, just wait it out. Um, yeah, my, my enthusiasm is definitely more in the case than it is in the hardware itself. I mean, the way I shop for hardware is usually, okay, what am I trying to accomplish from an aesthetic and a size standpoint? What fits and what looks good? Usually in that order. <laughs> Like I even thought about getting the 970 blocks for my 760s just so when I used them in projects, people would think they were 970s instead of 760s. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's say we go along with the Padres estimate. So one full year out, technology moves just disgustingly quickly these days. What are the odds that somebody will come up with a new um, a new OpenGL or a new DirectX, something that lives even closer to the metal that extends the life of the graphic cards that are currently on the market. Can you Anyone? repeat the question? Yeah. So <laughs> OpenGL, you know, you, you get, well, okay, let's use Apple as the example. They have, what did they call it? They called it metal. So it's much more um, uh, to, to, to optimize to run on the Apple hardware, uh, specifically the iOS stuff. What are the odds that somebody is going is looking at the current, you know, the extreme prices, the gouging, and saying, but if we do this and we optimize that, OpenGL suddenly runs 15% faster, or we get, you know, DirectX running 75% faster because we tweak something else. What are the odds that we have somebody figuring this stuff out and causing another graphics revolution? very low yeah i i think the next the graphics resolution is a revolution is going to be caused by moving cpu and gpu on the same die i mean that's okay. the next the next step where it's just going to be ridiculously fast and i mean as long as we're throwing out a future wish wish list why not throw some optane memory on that uh, on the same mm -hmm. die where you've got cpu gpu and ridiculously mm -hmm. fast memory now you've got something that is not just different and faster than what we've got but it's an entirely new architecture and, yeah. and that will require an entirely new way of thinking about programming and optimizing. Yeah. Uh, that's the next big revolution. And an entirely yeah. new lineup of mini computer chassis. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Right. Yes. There we go. <laughs> but, but Padre, don't you think that too, the industry is trying to hold back from that just so they can sell the components, you know, it's kind of like their bread and butter. I mean, if you go and change that, you're kind of eliminating some of the manufacturing involved, you know, well, I mean, the industry will go wherever money is. Yeah. And I mean, these the component suppliers, they'll still need to supply components. They'll still have their niche operations. But uh, I mean, especially when you look at an operation like AMD, where you've already got CPU and GPU under the same roof. Hmm. Uh, and, and, and you've got Intel, which has processors and memory. Um, it's not a Just huge jump. Yeah. Some of the key talent from AMD. I mean, yep. you can kind of think of it. I mean, remember there used to be multiple chipset manufacturers. Yep. Yep. And then there was this like, and they all went away and it all became Intel. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I know Intel's desperate to catch up to AMD and NVIDIA in terms of, of, you know, graphics performance. Um, you know, I don't see that happening in the next five or 10 years, but, uh, you know, it may, it, it'll be interesting to see because it seems like Intel's kind of circling back to, well, we missed the mobile revolution and we kind of screwed up on the ARM thing and we're not really in any cell phones. Um, so maybe we should go back to desktop processors and laptop processors and focus on that. And gosh, it'd be really nice if we'd have that 1050, 1070, 1080 level mobile performance. Um, you know, so they, they hired some key talent from, uh, I want to say from AMD, uh, which I, I, I mean, I'm curious to see where it goes because I think, you know, I think if Intel can figure out a way to eliminate anybody who's getting money from the equation so that they can get the money themselves, I think they'll cheerfully do it, um, you know, because they've done it in the past. Um, you know, I mean, how many times has Apple been like, that's a great piece of shareware? You know that utility you make? We're just going to put that right into OS X. Thanks. <laughs> that was a great idea. I mean, um, you know, I can think of I mean, the first time I saw that was like, I want to say window blinds like 25 years ago. Um, and, you know, what I mean, like I, it's just 
you know, charge what the market will bear and figure out what you can do to control the market as much as possible and make sure all the money's going to you. I mean, that just seems to be the, the way it works in the industry, which may be, you know, a little cynical of me but you know I, I remember when we used to look at like and you know there'd be a new processor and we'd have chipsets from three or four manufacturers and that just stopped one day i mean literally um you know and then you know stability and support got a little bit better um but uh and i certainly think it simplified you know the options for manufacturers and certainly made intel happy and increased intel's bottom line but um you know we'll see how that goes i think it's going to be a while because when you, you know, you still look at the discrete, you know, discrete GPUs are still so far ahead of even the best integrated graphics options at this point. But low VG from the chat says, don't they sandbag open GL direct X? So consumers will keep buying new GPUs might be conspiracy, but I think it's <laughs> actually a thing. <laughs> I don't know so much about sandbagging it so much as the game developers, especially when you look back at uh, Carmack when he was developing Doom 3, he didn't care about what was the cutting edge at the moment. He wanted to have his games running on the cutting edge seven years out, and he programmed for that. And he knew that he was going to have a hell of a time testing what he was creating for technology at that moment but it worked for him and we ended up with an amazing game engine that came out of doom 3 the game itself wasn't so hot but he kept pushing new technologies and i think that's the mindset from that is really what we're seeing with the sandbagging it isn't so much that they're sandbagging things is you've got these new young upstarts who are going yeah but i can make this hardware do that and I can make it jump through better hoops. And I can, you know, make the the new hotness that's going to drive the new hardware three generations out and keep it pushed up to the limit. Yeah, and you have to also remember that uh, it when you what you think of as sandbagging is actually good stewardship, because there is nothing that kills development momentum faster than releasing something new every other week just because you discover there is something new. <laughs> Yeah, that's, true. Uh, that, that's yeah. a horrible, horrible thing to live under. <laughs> thinking precisely. I mean, think of think of the development cycle of a game. Your releases have to take that into account. Otherwise, you're telling your developers, uh, whatever you do, it's going to be obsolete by the time you release it. Yeah, that's that's not a really good way to bring people into your stable. Yeah, and a lot of developers stick with the technology they already know and it makes things yeah. a lot faster. Yeah, that's that's human nature. Yeah. And they also a, Oops, sorry. Yep. I was going to say, we have another um, statement about how the money seems to be in smartphones now. Um, there's a, a programming um, utility, I believe it's called Unity, that has been helping the, the smartphone programming work the same way along with you know, the uh, computer side. So you can have an Unreal Engine-based game that will run the same way across the smartphone technologies and all of the, you know, the iOS tablets and everything like that. It's not right. going to run the same, but it means you program once and then you export it out to five different platforms. Right. And wow. so you're seeing instead of them having to go back to redesign the entire game from the bottom up in order to make it run on a quote unquote lesser value phone they just automatically kick the settings down and look it works on your phone that's the reason that unity is one of the biggest selling uh, game engines right now absolutely and you have to remember that that promise of write once compile many times that's been around since I started, actually maybe not since I started programming, but since I started doing object-oriented programming. That yeah. was the promise. You don't have to write for a platform, you just write for the language and we'll <laughs> compile for the platform. That's what um, Java was gonna do. <laughs> right? <laughs> that, well, that's what every programming language since Java has promised that they're gonna do. And, and even with Unity, Unity is fantastic. Unity is actually very easy to pick up. But in that particular case, it's normally write once compile many times and then optimize if yep. you're doing your job you got to optimize after the compile right. because it'll get you 80 percent of the way there but you you kind of want to be 90 90 95 percent of the way yeah <laughs> early access 
(laughs) (laughs) All right. So, um, well, we've gone over our time, which I knew we would, because this is a great panel, a great discussion, and there's no limit to what we have to discuss on this, really. But um, it is getting kind of time to uh, slow things down and end things. So we're going to go around, and I'm going to ask you guys to uh, give the audience uh, places where we can find you and uh, all of your different contact information. So we're going to start with Patrick. Hey, uh, come check me out at techthing, T-E-K-T-H-I-N-G.com. I'm at Patrick Norton on the Twitters. And if you're interested in home theater and audio, do me a favor, check out a podcast I do with Robert Heron, the TV genius uh, called avxl.com. And uh, thanks to you guys for having me on again. Really enjoyed it. Oh, it's, it's been awesome. Josh, where can people find you? NFC is in notfromconcentratesystems.com or SFF is in smallformfactor.net. Padre, where can people still find you for now? Well, for now, you can still find me at twit.tv. That's T-W-I-T.tv. I do do two shows on a weekly basis, Know How, which is all about making and DIY, and Twiat, This Week in Enterprise Tech, which is all about networking. And then you'll also find me on New Screen Savers and Twit and Security Now and Windows Weekly whenever uh, whenever whenever I can. Uh, you can also find me on the Twitters. I, I tweet. I think that's what all the cool kids are doing now. <laughs> I, uh, I tweet at Padre SJ. That's twitter.com slash Padre SJ. Uh, come check me out. I, I'm actually going to be doing what Patrick is doing right now over the next couple of months. I'm moving all my stuff out of this place. Uh, and you'll find me in a new place, but find me on Twitter and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Moss, you got any place where you want people to be looking for your stuff? Uh, sure. I don't know, whatever it is, youtube.com slash just look me up. I don't remember the name. Uh, mosquito mods. Mosquito mods. Otherwise, I'm around the mod zoo a lot too, or the modsquito.com finds all of those various places. And Bill, where do you want people looking to find your stuff? I'm um, right on this channel where you're watching this hangout with these awesome guests. And if you're on Twitter at MNPC Tech or Facebook, I have a fan page there. And I just want to thank everybody for joining us. And hopefully uh, we can all get together again for another topic down the road. And um, yeah, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you for all the uh, insight today. And in closing, you can find us at themodzoo.com. We are one of the uh, few remaining old school forums that actually still acts like an old school forum instead of uh, an advertising spot like some of them have turned into. I'm not going to name names, but everyone should know what they are. (laughs) And uh, You'll just just have to ignore the giant presented by MNPC Tech banner at the top. I don't have that on there. (laughs) (laughs) But the the thing about the forum is we try to be one of the old fashioned communities where if you have a problem with what you're doing with your project, you can actually talk to us and we will respond. There's always gonna be people there who have good, helpful, constructive criticism. And we always have how to's on anything. And we don't care if you come in and you ask the simple question of how do I get paint to stick? That's what we want. We want the people who don't know and who want to learn. And we're going to help you every step of the way. And we're not going to yell at you about, you know, finding Google and doing this, that, the other. That's not what we're about. We try to give that helping hand throughout the entire process. There's no such thing as a stupid question, although we're going to you know, laugh at you if you do ask. <laughs> <laughs> but from the Mod Zoo, you can find our Facebook, you can find our Twitter. We've got links to even the, fa- the G Plus page, you know, who uses G Plus anymore, right? Um, but it, we have the accounts. So if you have questions for us, just find us one of these locations, drop a question in the box, we'll get to you will usually reply fairly quickly. And if you have any suggestions for future guests, for future hangouts, let us know. That'd be fantastic. But on that note, we're going to be getting off the air, and you guys have yourself a good one. Oh, and uh, don't forget, you've got projects that need to be done, like me. I'm modding the upstairs apartment by removing carpet, and tomorrow's going to be fun because I get to throw several 50-pound bags worth of detritus out the window and not hit anything. So that's going to be awesome. That's my favorite part. (laughs) (laughs) So you guys have a good one and we'll talk to you next time.